Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And a lot of weird shit. Roll to seize! Welcome to Roll to Seas. This is episode 10. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and I'm joined by my co-host and Warhammer enthusiast, Andrew Dickinger. That's Mr. Enthusiast to you, mister. I know. I, that's right. I forgot that you got deemed that title by the Space Emperor, right? That's right. Space oh my Emperor. God, may his squidness reign forever and all time. And, and the inky goodness coming from the sky. It's, it's nothing but blessings. It is nothing but blessings. It. I mean, it burns my skin and it destroys, I mean, most of the populace, but... We have to trust in the Squiddy Emperor. He it's, knows what's right. It's a good burn. We knows what's right. <laughs> we knows what's right. We knows what's right. I'm sorry. Uh, my grammar has only improved since he's come to our great planet. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, speaking of uh, planet destruction, the internet has exploded. Detonated. It literally a Moab went off. Yeah, it's gone pretty nuts since the release of news of Eldar. The yeah. new Eldar has graced the internet, the rules have made it onto Daka Daka and other websites, and uh, oh boy, people are not happy with a lot of the things they're finding out. Games Workshop has always had a soft spot for Eldar. Yeah. There's never been a bad Eldar codex. Not really, no. Um, the Space Elves, they've uh, they have got some money in the pocket of those GW guys. Yeah, they're like slipping them a couple Benjamins. They're just like, slipping them some soul yeah. stones. Like, yeah, some, you know, in case you don't want to get eaten by a demon god when you die. You know, just from us. <laughs> Do with it what you will. I mean, they've gotten a lot of changes. There were some obvious, I wouldn't actually call them nerfs. I'd call it like restructuring yeah it's like readjustments cheese like Mm -hmm. the changes to the wave serpent with its serpent shield like now where the some changes that a little people have gotten upset with yes just a Um, few just a tad i'll only mention a couple because we only have limited time there are uh, changes to all the aspects first of all exarch powers are gone they're gone from the codex the units now just have powers by default which i actually like better because then it's like less of you're paying to get their skills, which yeah. you think they already would know. <laughs> so uh, I'm here, guys, to take over the troop. Don't worry, I've got some cool tactical plans. I, I thought I packed my tactical plans, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just a really well dressed version of one of you guys. Let's do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's it. That's all they were. Um, so that makes them more interesting, and also makes the game. And this isn't like a, a knock on the game currently, really, but it also makes the game more rapid. Like when you just know what they have, yeah. and all of the changes have been pretty cool. There's some that are a little silly and kind of ridiculously strong. Um, like, are you talking about those D-weapons, Andrew? Just I mean, throwing those D-weapons all around. D-weapon uh, for you, D-weapon for you. What about you? Did you? No? You sure you don't want one? Yeah, so be- uh, before we get the D-weapons, I mean, the aspects like Swooping Hawks now are disgusting. Super strong. So good. I love that they just kill flying vehicles. It's just great. Oh, man. that That's their vector strike. Their haywire vector strike against flyers Brutal. is disgusting. Brutal. For things like fire raptors. Forge yes. Stuff. The demon from the skies, fire raptors, my bane of my existence. But now a bunch of uh, flying uh, winged people can Hawk blow man. it up. Yeah, Hawkmen can take it They're down. all attorneys at law. They're like, objection! <laughs> and they fly I over. object to your existence. Haywire <laughs> to the face um, so that so that's cool uh i think they should have gotten a little bit of a point increase but i mean we'll see if yeah, we'll see we'll see um, how the bird men do but the i mean the cool part about the arm the army now all well, that i mean they actually made banshees possibly yes. usable. oh my god what a surprise to everybody banshees got like such a buff now Sure. Eldar still doesn't have an assault vehicle, or at least to my knowledge. The no, they Codex do. isn't in our hands. It but doesn't seem like they do. Doesn't seem like they do. But they don't have an assault vehicle yet. But uh, Banshees, my God, the increase in movement, the increase in run and charge and all that good stuff, and their their ability when they charge into combat is... No Overwatch. Awesome. Whoa. That's ridiculous, which finally kind of brings the danger of the Banshee masks, which in old editions were really strong because you didn't have Overwatch, but it now now has much more of an application to the newer game when including Overwatch, well, something one, that just completely disregards it. And once again, it. it's the the rule is actually more 
interesting and more fluff based. Yes, like, that's, which is fun. They're supposed to be screaming and making people cover their ears, which means that like you wouldn't be firing. You wouldn't I'm, be like, firing guns. It's a cool idea. Now, obviously, someone like me as a Tau player <laughs> weeps a bit, a little bit when Banshees. You guys, I no, can't no Overwatch. Chance. I can't Overwatch these guys. Um, Not a chance. And especially now that since uh, as well, uh, all Tarks uh, they can take Banshee mask and essentially give that rule to any squad they join, which then gets scary. Yeah. Um, but then uh, we'll get we'll go into the the crux of the matter now. Yes. The changes that should not have happened. <laughs> I mean, it's just like D weapons all over the place. Like D. First of all, my stance on D weapons is that melee D weapons are fine. I know a lot of people hem and haw. I'm also a Tyranid player. I have no D weapons, and a single knight with one hit can kill like any of my monstrous creatures, right. which sucks. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just like. You have to get there. You have to really work for that D-weapon to go into place. Now, when you've got a ranged D-weapon... Oh, man. Not so much. I mean, the shit just hits the fan, essentially. What did you do to do this? Well, I went first, so you're dead. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and especially with something like the Wraith Knight, which has a 36-inch ranged two-shot D-weapon. It's just like, why? Brutal. Why did they need that? So guys, we've dived into a little bit about the changes with Eldar and the shenanigans that have come from it and the exploding internet, but now let's get into a little bit of the show where we talk about our seasons of the month, where Andrew and I discuss uh, our biggest faults, our uh, kerfuffles, if you will, that's the actual Kerfuffle, space term. Yes. That, that's a space term. That's what the uh, great squid god, squid god emperor uh, has determined uh, is correct, so please use kerfuffles but um andrew please explain your season of the month first so the last tournament i was in i was playing with my silly towel list ah. and by silly towel list i mean it has 27 sniper drones in it which is so silly just to give you a taste <laughs> it was a, a pretty diverse tournament as soon as you start throwing in like the itc format points which itc is a, a tournament format for the west coast essentially mm-hmm. that like it rules over all of the west coast tournaments so people hear itc and they're like i can get points and they're just like <laughs> go flock to tournaments so this tournament we definitely saw a lot of people that we'd never seen before yeah it's like very new faces here i was like whoa there's like 20 plus people here what happened oh itc points <laughs> yeah that's what it was <laughs> but i was playing against a lot of different armies and specifically against the first army i played against was orcs hmm. now orcs aren't widely discussed as being super competitive in that's this edition. true we know quite a few people one in particular who would certainly agree that they are not uber competitive yeah they got a lot of dumb rules that just hurt them and don't ever help them which is kind of weird but he specifically plays a, a bully boys army which if you don't know what bullies bully boys are it's a formation from the gas call supplement that allows you to take a formation of fearless awesome mega knobs and i mean I, i'll be honest like anything beyond like 10 mega knobs is terrifying because yeah. they all have power claws mm-hmm. which means if they make it to you in close combat good luck surviving that yeah you're probably dead so he had like a line of trucks and a battle wagon and all these vehicles and like, i got these sniper shots like mad max style just riding at you oh yeah i mean it's uh, especially running bully boys he's just gonna basically have a guy sitting in back giving them all a four plus all of his vehicles a four plus invul save for the for the against shooting right which makes it even more difficult so magical trucks really magical trucks and then he just like of course just guns it straight for you because mm-hmm. i mean he why wouldn't you he doesn't need the trucks to survive yeah, who cares if they die in front of you who the hell cares They're, the orcs are right there which is just like <laughs> this well, is where i wanted to be <laughs> well shit but my c specifically is i was running farsight bomb for the first time i have actually never run farsight bomb in a tournament before <laughs> i i normally stayed away from it because i felt it was it was kind of cheese for a while mm-hmm. like being able to have like a unit that drops in with stealth, and this is the old rules before they change, they FAQ special characters with infiltrate. But they they could either infiltrate the entire bomb of like seven bodyguards plus farsight plus shadow sun, or you could deep no scatter deep strike all of them, and they right. all have special weapons, and they all can fire at different targets. And, and they were just eating just like, so much cheddar, so much cheese when they dropped. I in. mean, it just rains from the sky like this. Yeah, guy, just <sighs> pretty amazing. Just like Gouda all over the place. <laughs> just, Gouda, Gouda, Gouda. Just Gouda. What what is this? Is it hail, sir? It's Gouda. Get the men ready. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the, the stuff that most people hem and haw about with uh, Tau, which is they can have the one guy that gives the entire unit ignores cover and twin length. Yep, there's that. So my mistake was that I started them on the board. Mm. 
And specifically, I started them on the board way too close in proximity to Bully Boys. <laughs> So I managed to kill all of his trucks. Oh, great. But not before three of them were like eight inches in front of my lines. Oh, sad face. I was thinking with Farsight specifically like that I would be able to move up and I would blast most of his boys away. Well, here's where the problem comes in. Uh, His guy that gives them all a four plus and bull save, Mm -hmm. all of his all models within six inches of him, a four plus and bull save. If he's in a vehicle, it only applies the save to the vehicle. Oh. But if he's out of the vehicle, it's anything within six inches. Well, my dumbass... Oh, you killed that vehicle, decided didn't you, to Andrew? to shoot the vehicle first uh. instead of going for the two knob squads in the open with no invul saves with all of the melta and plasma. I you know had. what happened? The men were going to fire and they turned to Farsight for, for his command and he had just so much gouda in his mouth they couldn't hear just what like, he was saying. Cover it. Like, oh, fire at the truck. Okay, fire at the truck. No, 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 no. <laughs> and too late. So, of course, I fire at the fucking truck and he gives and, everybody saves and he's like well thanks i mean he literally said my opponent said he just said well thanks and i was like what and he was like well now i get to d- disembark him out of the vehicles within six inches of all of the mega knobs and i was just like that was the biggest face palm moment i had and I was you just face like, palm he jumped in the air and froze <laughs> rock music played <laughs> so sad lo and behold you know and i start to shoot all my low ap weapons at his mega knobs and are at like barely half effective as opposed to possibly deleting one and ser- critically wounding another which then escalates further to these units suddenly being in assault range mm-hmm. in my warlord luckily that didn't become a huge issue because farsight actually managed to kill the one in base contact with him Ooh. before he struck which then allowed me to hit and run out with taking wounds uh, silver lining but yeah. i still that was the, the probably the biggest dumbass thing i've done in a long time <laughs> Jeez. Well, that was a great seize. All right, so my seize of the month for this episode Hit me. actually has to do with a little bit of the controversy we were talking about earlier, but pre-controversy. My story is about a lovable skyscraper that just wants to make friends with everybody except for everybody that's not Eldar, and that is a Wraith Knight. Oh, yeah, those y- things. Yeah, everybody loves the Wraith Knight now, being a gargantuan and D-weapons and, and all that good stuff. And no Well... He wasn't always a gargantuan, this lovable fella, for a little while, until recently, and of course the codex is announced, so it's not 100% official yet, but I had a game recently at a tournament where I was playing with my Wraith Knight, single Wraith Knight, and I was like, well, you know, this guy's badass, he's strong, he's a monstrous creature, he's toughness 8, so I placed my Wraith Knight out, I actually put him in cover, because I knew I was playing against Space Marines, I knew that they had combi weapons, so they had melta guns and plasma guns and all this stuff, low AP value to ignore my AP3. Gotta stick that toe in cover. Gotta stick that toe in cover. For some reason, a skyscraper can get cover in a tiny patch of, you know, rubble. Hey, man, a flying monstrous creature is something that's actually midair, puts its toe in cover and gets cover. It somehow makes all the sense, of course. Dust cloud, that's what I explained. (laughs) It's a dust cloud. It's a dust cloud, okay? So he has his toe in dust cloud, and uh, I'm like, all right, I'm good. I've got him covered for the first round. I just need his guys to come in, and he will just murder face everything by uh, second turn once it's my turn. So I had first turn. I placed everybody out. I put his toe in cover. I was all set. Now, what loadout were you using on this Wraith Knight? The Wraith Knight, I was just doing a standard uh, two, well, D weapons now, but two uh, Wraith guns, essentially. Okay, so you weren't using the Sun Cannon. No, I wasn't using Sun Cannon. I was just running his standard uh, two Strength 10 weapons, right? Just Standard loadout, 240 points. And I had a couple other my Eldar pieces on the board. The rest of them were going to be deep striking and coming in from reserve. So I had turn one. He's out there, tone cover. He's feeling good, making dust. All great. Next turn, it's... I'm playing Space Marines, and they're rocking kind of like the Descent of Angels. Everybody's coming in in drop pods. You've got uh, veteran squads. You've got people with combi weapons, Meltas, Flamers, all that good stuff. I didn't really have any targets for the Flamers, so I was feeling good about it. But his guys come in. Just, uh, I think it was three or four pods, right? You know, half. It's a total of seven pods. Yeah. The problem that I didn't think about and I didn't remember is that the veteran squad has special bullets for some oh, reason. Oh, Stern Guard. Yeah, Stern Guard. They, for some reason, have these magical bullets that basically become whatever they want in that moment. I guess they have, like, a bunch of different clips on their body at any given time. I would assume so. Yeah, that's what they're just, they're just guys covered in different bullets and clips. And they, Stern Guard drop in. I'm like, all right, yeah, they've got combi weapons. That's fine. I've got my cover. And he's like, oh, I'm going to be using poison shots. 
And I was like, I think they're uh, called hellfire rounds. Poison shots? It's like, yeah, so I'm going to wound your big stupid robot on two pluses. And I was like, oh, no, because if you don't know this, sure, I would have gotten those cover saves against just a few Meltas, just a few Plasmas, which with six wounds, he'd probably survive even if I got bad rolls. Problem is, I'm getting... Full fire blast, I'm getting... I, he's within the range to do two shots. So he's... Yeah, I mean, a full 10-man squad with rapid fire wounding on twos is gonna do damage. Is really bad. And the problem is, usually that's a saving point for me. I've got toughness eight. I don't care about your stupid rapid fire bolter guns. But in this case, I did care. And I don't know if you know about this, but Wraith Knights have a three-up armor. They're not two-up like, uh, you know, you see with the bigger other robots out there like, like Tau uh, has. Like Riptides. Like Riptides. Stuff. It's actually just a three-up. Or Dread Knights. Or Dread Knights. So he just lays into my Wraith Knight with these Hellfire bullets, and unfortunately for my giant, lovable Skyscraper robot, I think it was just like 15 wounds. It was just, he got really great rolls. It was just something outrageous. Well, he probably also popped that Doctrine and allows them to re-roll ones for that turn. It it was, I mean, three ups, re-rolling ones, and then two up woundings. It was just too many wounds, and it's just three up saves. And I mean, it's six wounds on a giant monstrous creature, but he leveled my Wraith Knight. And from that point, I mean, besides just demoralizing myself and my army, it basically crippled my center point to really give some trouble to his drop pods, to his men on the ground with just engaging them and taking them on in close combat, and it just completely crippled me from there on out. So uh, I guess it's a nice little cathartic moment for everybody out there who's having some hatred towards the future Wraith Knights. Um, I gave you a nice little a wonderful picture of stern guard coming in and just blowing away a skyscraper you know what i think they might still be able to do that will they i don't think it i it, unless i i i could be mistaken i'm not exactly familiar with right we're not 100 percent. but unless it says poison two plus i want because the old stern guard i remember said they just wound on, on two, two plus, plus. Mm. so it ha- would have to say poison specifically in that case they would only wound on sixes but If it doesn't... Uh Uh-oh. Well, it seems like the gargantuan monster may still have an enemy in the Stern Guard, but we'll find out when that codex drops and maybe when we get to a computer. Guys, that was our Seasons of the Month, and that will take us to the Brown Library. All right, guys, we're here in the Brown Library. We had to shut the doors because Greg was getting a little bit upset. See... If you guys don't know, the Brown Library is within the Black Library. It's a subsection, and right now in the Black Library, it's going nuts up there. The Eldar are throwing all kinds of parties with all these new announcements, and look at these cool new jet bikes we've got. They're so making sense now. <laughs> so uh, we had getting to close the doors. Yeah, getting a bit rowdy up there. I've never seen Eldred really uh, take it, take it to the shots like he's doing right now, but... Man, can that man consume alcohol. Yeah, I mean, crap. I think he's mostly crystal now, so <laughs> I don't even know how that affects him anymore. But anyways, we're here, we're in the Brown Library, and as we do each month, we source out to the magical landscape that is known as Dakadak, and run up a forum to see what units should we be taking a look at for our episode. So, Andrew, what unit is it for this episode? Now, I'd like to start this with a disclaimer. Okay. Last episode, we were talking about Killicons uh-huh. in the Orcs, and I failed to mention something very, very orky and Gretchen-y. And a fan please noted this for us, so we want to put the disclaimer out there. Disclaimer. I didn't talk about Gratzookas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gratzookas are really awesome. Scrap gun weapons. I should have talked about them. So, sir, thank you for bringing that to our attention. We were all horribly wrong, and the squid god has made us pay for it. So. I mean, we're now without skin, so yeah, I, we I, are. I think it's a fair trade. It's breezier, though, right? It feels nice. I mean, it's always breezy it's though. always breezy <laughs> <laughs> so what are we here to talk about today now ironically enough <laughs> the one that ended up winning the uh the show again is orcs oh god <laughs> gas the green skins are here to stay the gas coal is passing on them teeth if you didn't know they you the orc culture uses teeth as currency makes sense um which is actually ironically utopian style and kind of perfect because they regrow their teeth i mean they are uh, a perfect society it's pretty amazing um so they regrow their teeth so uh, no orc is actually poor for very long yeah it's Um, perfect i mean we should all just i I mean mean, i not too many people are gonna be able to sell much of ourselves because of everything we've given to the squid god but you know it would have worked in a different time so specifically though uh there is actually a tie with regards uh, to the unit oh boy that we'd be talking about on this edition of the brown library um and those two units one of them is actually my favorite my oh. favorite unit in the entire orc what was it 
And that unit is flash gates. Ah, uh, you wanted it too. I think last time you willed it into existence. I was like, I was. Actually, That's why you're missing so many teeth. You paid off somebody, didn't you, Andrew? I'm not missing any teeth. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to speak like that for the rest of the podcast. No one's going to be able to understand anything you're saying. Um, but uh, surprisingly, the other unit, mm-hmm. um, since there was a tie is uh commandos what orc commandos i don't even know about that unit uh, there's the, probably a reason i they're, guess they're very entertaining um yeah they're surprisingly not terrible but like most people just sort of like glaze over them and decide not to use them okay so i, I like flash kits a little more so we're gonna right. talk about them second okay commandos essentially are the opposite of what orc culture reveres hmm. which is loudness and getting into the face of the enemy quick and crumping them. I mean, just smashing everything to bits. Are they like ninja orcs? They are, in fact, ninja orcs. What? That They're, exists? Actually, it'd be more acu- accurate to describe them as if the company of commandos, spelled with a C instead, because orc commandos spell spelled with a K, commandos in the movie Predator okay. with Arnold Schwarzenegger. A great, if they great were, film. If they were all orcs. That's what they're like. Really? Yeah. That's so strange. I can see why maybe people wouldn't take to them immediately because it just seems counter orcish. Yeah, and I mean, in it, it reflects it in the fluff as well, where uh, you know most orcs would call them cowardly and stuff like that because they'll do like hit and run tactics, like mm. guerrilla tactics and stuff like that. But ironically, uh, Gas Cole, the prophet of the Wog, makes huge use of them. Oh, okay. Because I mean, he well one he's you know arguably the smartest orc but and we also know he's spoken to by a magic spider that lives in his brain that's right that's Ma- true the magic brain spider that's canon that. that's canon <laughs> <laughs> um but these guys like they made a name for themselves on the war of armageddon which is where gas essentially became famous mm-hmm. i mean there were imperial guard commanders that straight didn't believe their men and actually executed their men for cowardice <laughs> oh no because they were tar- talking about orcs wearing camouflage and doing guerrilla tactics and stuff and they're like there's no such thing as an orc that doesn't come right at your face with guns blazing you're a coward pow man the imperial armies are just really good at sourcing information and like (laughs) there's no wonder they don't know how to use the guns they have i mean let's just say they're obviously the most progressive army in the universe they are accepting new ideas yeah really but uh there is one orc in particular that like became like death in disguise and was like the most feared orc out of all of the orcs in the war of armageddon and that guy's name was boss snickrot i've heard about this before and only because his name reminds me of a piece of candy that that's a weird piece of candy you didn't eat snickerots as a kid no no snickerots a lot of you out there ate snickerots am i right am i is that just something that person made that up didn't they Oh my god! I don't think that was candy. I'm regressing. <laughs> I'm regressing. <laughs> but Boss Nickrat, he was a uh, he was like a super commando essentially. He mm. was Dutch from. He Predator. was Arnold. He was Arnold. That's awesome. Um, he had uh, essentially, or he has a pair of knives that are like Billy's machete from oh, that movie. Perfect. Huge freaking daggers, which are more like swords. I was going to say, daggers. for an orc, like they might consider it a dagger. Anyone else be like, well, that's a sword, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, because they're like the length of like a man's arm. Yeah, that's like a sword. It's sword like. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> uh, but he calls them Mork's teeth essentially because they're, uh, you know, they're gods are yeah that's cool i like it um and uh he's just he's he was so good at he was like imagine him like a death leaper for the tyranids like right. he's their death leaper where he could just come out from the shadows and just kill a bunch of guys and then just vanish into thin air that's amazing and the the greatest story of him was he and his command he led his commandos and what's crazy is these guys are sneaky and stealthy but they're still <laughs> orcs so like you just see these big huge like uh like eight foot tall things just sneaking around it's like logically trying to imagine actual ninja turtles being stealthy when you realize it's a giant freaking turtle going through it's the same thing that orcs are huge i mean they're just really bulky and i mean these guys are also wearing chains and stuff which you think would be like clink clinking they are ninja turtles oh my god they're basically ninja Turtles. they were trained remember that old uh scene from the first ninja turtle movie where Raphael has to take all the bells off of that thing without making a sound exactly they're they're trained by a giant rat it That's... all makes sense. Skaven is the new codex. We called it here, folks. <laughs> Skaven is coming to 40k. Anyway, but yeah, Snickrod is a sen- he's Leonardo. I mean, he's he's got the double swords and everything. But he led his commando group into a camp, mm-hmm. and they managed to kill like 
everyone in the camp without anyone knowing. And that is very like, unorc like. Like all of the sentries that were around the camp were all left alive. Oh, that's so, so that messed they, up. They went in, they killed everybody within the camp, and then left. And all the sentries went out, or like went back, and were just like, "What the fuck? Everybody's <laughs> dead." That's a pretty. That's a psychological screw over right there. And that's what he does. Like that's what their best tactic is: is essentially messing with people. Yeah. Um. So now that we've talked about uh, commandos, we can finally get to flash gets down and down. They play that favorites. theme song when they come into battle. I mean, right? it's so just, the opposite. It's they, just like eighties music, just like awesome. um, full blast. Their battle wagons are just covered in speakers. Flash gets, I imagine it's like it's every time they go into battle, it's like the G.I. Joe intro. It's like flash gets and it's just in crazy tanks and sailor outfits. Well, I imagine, you know, because a flash get uh, essentially flash gets are the the wealthiest orcs in in, in the the, the galaxy. They're uber rich. They've got so much teeth. Teeth for days. So many teeth just all over the place. Uh, They got gold shit everywhere. They're like super bling tastic. Fantastic. Tons and tons of bling. (laughs) And their guns are like. Their boom boxes are golden. They're literally. Their guns are literally called snaz guns, as in snazzy guns. Wow. Um, That's amazing. But these guns, like, they've. They're like the the most powerful decked out shooter that an orc could possibly want in their life. Mm -hmm. And they're nasty. I mean, they're three shots, they're strength five, they they have a D6 AP, which means they could be AP one, two, or three. They could be really great if they're feeling good that day. Um, And they also have this thing on their eye called a git find, though, you know, because they call anybody that's not an orc a bunch of gits which is right. like an idiot and if the the gift find is if they stay stationary they have bs3 so they actually can get the best ballistic skill in orcs oh wow you know three shot weapons at 24 inch range at bs3 that's actually a lot of firepower yeah that's great especially if it can be low ap because then even space marines are like holy shit oh no <laughs> but the cool thing about them and I, this is how i imagine them and how i would con- uh, convert them essentially is you just imagine they're rockers they're literally just rockers in outer space all of their guns have to just be guitars that are converted to shoot shit like of course like antonio banderas and desperado i mean they are the mariachis yes! <laughs> That is what they are, and so like the mariachis of death. <laughs> they're just like and it's just like uh, them playing strings. It's just blasting gunshots. So they are playing the, like flash kiss, but as they play it, it's just blowing. And dudes their battle up. wagons are essentially just stages on wheels. Like that's uh, uh, you can't close top them. They have to be open oh top. They have to be stages with speakers. I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but did you see that character in the Mad Max trailer that's coming out exactly. where the guys all he's got like the subwoofers and he's literally rocking out. Fire Fire shooting out of his guitar like that is that's them, them. That's they are flash, flash gets. Gets. that's awesome um yeah so like flat i i love them their fluff is amazing they they get the the biggest thrill unlike orcs again so two units very unlike the normal orc ah. cunning essentially which is like most orcs like to get thick get into the thick of it and right smash stuff in close combat whereas you have the commandos who like to do hit and run tactics and then you have the flash gets which get a great thrill out of blasting guys from afar especially when another group of orcs is about to get into close combat with them oh that's like their greatest thrill is, thrill is to basically blast an enemy apart right as their allies are about to so get basically there. to dick over their oh, own they're the biggest dicks in the universe by far <laughs> they're just huge dicks they just make fun of everyone it's just hilarious. they're just rich assholes they're what, just they're the rich rich douchebags of the so many universe. popped collars it's just like oh like my 50 god of them just like whoa that's amazing they're just awesome they're just my favorite thing so the army obviously had the list had to be based off of these two units Mm -hmm. now the unfortunate side is that they're both they both can get kind of expensive so they're like how much can you fit in there well i was unwilling to compromise and so (laughs) as always i believe we had an episode where you put like 16 kilocons in one thing so you know i didn't do any of that that's nonsense (laughs) but so the core of the army because it had had to just be as many commandos and as many flash kits of course the HQ is just a Big Mac on a war bike with the Mega Force Field, the thing that gives the 4 plus impulse save right. things within six, uh, six inches. Troops are just gr- uh, grots because to the, who yeah, the hell who cares? cares. But then the crux of it is the heavy support. The heavy support is three squads of 10 flash gets oh God. in battle wagons with kill cannons. Wow, no, 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 no. Because 
You have to. Just so many stages just driving up the field. So you have like you have the Big Mac sitting behind all three battle wagons, giving them all four plus invul saves and possibly repairing them if they need to. Because right. he's still got mech tools, so he can do that. Yeah. And has the war bike, obviously, to give him a higher toughness and to give him cover save and stuff, just to give him some survivability. Yeah, some survivability. Um, but the main thing is to just make sure the stages of glory <laughs> make it to the center of the field. You're not going to any further than that. You just go to the center of the field. So you can shoot everything. And just have... Just stay stationary then at that point to give them all BS3 and just have a 24-inch bubble of doom. Just a full-on rock concert right in the center like of the that. arena. I mean, because they want to spread the rock as they hard do. as they can. The crux little added sort of like throw things into disarray group because like it's like these are almost like i imagine them they're the security at the concert the guys that you never notice are there until something happens and they just come out of the woodwork and just start right they're in the shadows you got the black shirts on so you never see them there until you got like the things in their ears they're like oh we go we're go we're going out (laughs) so they're like security the paid security for the rockers essentially um so they have a formation that's actually called the uh, Boss Snickrot's Red Skull Commandos. Because uh, most of uh, there's different factions of orcs, like of Bad Moons and Evil Sons and stuff like that. Well, most of the uh, the commandos come out of the Red Skulls faction. Oh, okay. Um, so this formation actually has some really cool rules. First, you have to take Snickrot. And then you have to take four squads of commandos. That's oh, wow. Like the stipulation is you must Jeez, have Jeez, that. that's a pretty solid stipulation. The cool thing, though, is that Snickrot's rule is normally when in any unit he joins, he can make come in from any table edge. Unlike the normal outflank where you roll for it, like you can even come from the opponent's table edge. So, Wow. Okay, that's pretty mean. So then this actually passes to the entire formation. So all wow. four squads. So it's not just the one he's with. No, it's all of them. That's pretty great. They all come in from whatever table edge you want. Now here's the downside is that you can't spread them. Oh, okay. They, you roll one reserve roll, and then they all come in from that reserve roll. They're not all one unit, but they all just arrive from the same place at the same time. Oh, okay, so they do come from one side. You from can't, one side. Because I was just thinking, like you were saying, it you just know, come po- from all one, sides. one edge, one edge, one behind, and you just spread it out. It's like, I hope you don't have anything walking in or outflanking from that area. Um, but where this where this gets crazy, though, it's still 20 boys, essentially, mm-hmm. and Snickrot coming in from possibly your table Directly edge. behind you. Um, and each squad, I gave two Burnas. So they, oh. each squad has two Flamers. The cool thing about Burnas, though, that I keep forgetting is that if you don't fire with them... They count as power weapons in close combat. What? Really? They're AP3 weapons. So in they're, close I guess combat. they just heat them up and just hit you with they them? They use it as cutting torches as oh, opposed to a flamethrower. Gross. And so uh, the, the, the other rule that they get is that um, instead of stealth when they arrive, they all have shrouded when they arrive. Oh. But the other cool thing is that if you don't fire with them, if you don't use their weapons, you re roll failed cover saves. Wow. So it's like, it's got enormous versatility where you can come in and you can just throw eight flamers on a bunch of backfield squads and just roast a bunch of shit or just sit it back for a turn, have awesome re-rollable cover saves, potentially two plus re-rollable cover saves. That's nuts. And then just go into close combat and just wreck face because you have four power claws. It's like, well, you can go that way, closer to the death rockers, or you can stay here and we're going to kill you in and a that's, turn. And that's it. That's the pincer move, essentially, is that I you have that. The, just the death squad in the center and then all the other stuff. I forgot to mention as well that each battle wagon has a strength seven AP3 large blast on it. So Sounds it's pretty just good. Like tossing those around yeah. and stuff. Um, now, I did recognize that the one major weakness that this army had is it has no answer for flyers, really. But, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> they also, orcs are not notable for their uh, high ballistic skills. So, you know, what are you going to do? Eh. And then uh, they also can have problems with vehicles. I mean, they do have power claws to kill vehicles in close combat, and they can be strength four on the charge. So that can kill vehicles as well. It is a slight weakness, sure. But, I mean, the, the army is there to more just have fun and just l- the look on your opponent's face when he's just like, well, I have shit or I have shit. Yeah. Which what do shit I deal do with? I prefer? Do I fight the ninjas or do I fight the rockers? I mean, what what am I doing here? And most of, I mean, most of 40K, the, at least in this edition, is it's a rock, paper, scissors game. Like, exactly. And so in the, in the event that you go against an infantry heavy list or something like that, or like pod marines or something, like, good fucking luck. <laughs> Enjoy. with all that shit. Oh, my. My God, that's great! I, I love, love it. it. So, uh, what would be the name of this army? 
Uh, so I was trying to come up with, because it was a dual, you know, two different things, and I think it just needs to be, like, a simple word that describes both units, so it's called Sneaky Loudy. <laughs> and that's straight-up orc terminology, too. It's Sneaky Loudy. We are Sneaky Loudy. <laughs> they Loudy, we Sneaky. That's our name. <laughs> I don't know why I gave them a thick British accent. Oh, because that's what they have. Oh, they do, that's true. Oh, they have the super, they have the thickest British accent. <laughs> why are orcs British? That's so weird. I think because Games Workshop since they're a British company, made, it made orcs to make fun of themselves, essentially. I guess that's so silly. Because they have, like, the thick, thickest, like, cogni, like... I mean, they say, like, a lot of different slang terms that no one except British has any idea right. what they mean. Like, crumpin? <laughs> like, who says crumpin? Only British and orc people. <laughs> Guys, all right, well, that was an awesome Brown Library segment. Thank you for sharing that. And now that takes us into our last segment here, the DACA of DACAs, where we're listening to the loudest and most entertaining comments out there in the DACA DACA forum. So, Andrew, what do we have today? Now, since it was two units this time, it's we're not going to have a usual DACA of DACAs, where it's like usually just one person have makes says something really bonkers, essentially, <laughs> about the thing that we're trying to use. Like, it's utter shit, or like, they can be crazy if this. Right. Um, so instead, I implore you, implore you, to go on Google Images okay. and search Commando and Flashkit conversions because it is nothing but a fun time. Like, there are Commandos that are literally just, it's like a barrel <laughs> on a base with, like, a hole cut in it and arms sticking out That's of either awesome. side. <laughs> it's like the the box from uh, the Snake, the Metal Gear Solid games. Like, exactly. Bring! Like, just Snake hiding in a little cardboard like box. Like, there's one that's just an orc emerging from a pipe. And then there's one, that's, there's one that's literally just, it's a car, it's an orc holding a cardboard cutout of an orc saying, I'm not an orc. That's amazing. I mean, it's just, the, the creativity with these two units specifically is just so good i love it guys you have a great homework assignment please enjoy the magic that is the internet in these units all right so that concludes episode 10 of roll the seas we'll be posting a new episode every month please leave us a review or any comments on itunes it really helps people find the show and if you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts head over to partialarc.com that's arc with a c of course you can email us any questions at roll to seas at gmail.com and let us know any of your crazy conversions or stuff that you've done with commandos or flash kits we'd love to hear about it and of course we have our forum on daka daka check it out and that form is under uh, you can search uh, underrated units on the forum tool section or there will be a link to the form itself on our website exactly and of course you can always follow us on twitter and instagram at partial arc thanks for listening and your fun fact for this month is if you're an orc just remember that loud also means quiet so what you think about it in the terms of commandos they're being really loud, so people think they're just normal orcs, but then all of a sudden they're on you. What's well, so weird? That's such like a mix-match switcheroo. They just have to believe, They Jay. just have to believe. <laughs>